Well, only halfway there now. Uh, yeah, this way. At least he runs, though. This would have been a long game if, if he walked everywhere. Still, it takes absolutely forever to get from one end of the island. I'm sure there was a quick way to do that, though, to get back, but I don't know my way around enough, and I'd probably end up lost. So... Uh, where's my fishing line? Perhaps another time. Let's fishing line? There. Yes, that would be strong enough to sew the silk sheets together. How was the parachute coming along? When it's done, I will let you know, Mr. Narapot. Good day, Miss Brent. Whoa, no need to take that sort of tone. Um, I'm not sure what to do next. We'll go up to the woodshed. That's where uh, Blore and Lombard went, so... That's where we'll go as well. Woodshed is empty. This is a dead end. If Owen's buried under that wood pile, good riddance to him. Have you searched the entire island? Early days yet. Plenty of ground still to cover. That'll do, Mr. Bloor. And off they went to end. As soon as I turn up, they always just leave. Oh, is that everything now, or...? The only problem with this chapter thing, the uncertainty of what the hell I'm supposed to do to get it to move to the next chapter. Ah, what else have we got in our inventory? I can't even think what any of this stuff is used for except for the parachute. Like that, that big block of cheese. I don't ever remember using a big block of cheese. <clears throat> I'll probably just have to go and talk to some people. That's usually what you've got to do. You just talk to everybody, and once you've spoken to everybody, it ends the chapter. Hello, Rogers. Hello, sir. Was there anything you required? Just looking around. That ham looks good. Mrs. Rogers had a way with hams. Baked, boiled, fried, pickled, en casserole. Always a treat. When will dinner be ready? Eight o'clock, sir, or close to it. Have you noticed anything out of the ordinary since you arrived here, Rogers? Just this, sir. This house is more like a museum than a residence. I've dusted every square inch, and I've found articles left behind by many previous owners, including the Robsons, that actress, and even the Admiralty. The only owners who seem to have left no mark at all are Mr. and Mrs. Owen. Good day to you, Mr. Rogers. The wind is picking up again, and there are white horses on the sea. Has anyone seen the good doctor? Here I am, Judge, just uh, freshening up in my room before dinner. How did your search go, Mr. Lombard? Badly, Judge. I'm afraid I found nothing and lost Mr. Bloor. There's a squall moving in again. Ship rocks become quite windy. Rogers? What is it, Mayor? The figures, sir. The figures in the middle of the table. Look, now another's gone. There's only seven. It doesn't make sense. What's going on? What's happening? We can discuss this new development over dinner. It's ready, Rogers? Uh, yes, sir. It's only cold tongue and cold ham, sir. We understand, Rogers. Where's the general? Last time I saw him was on that beach. You asked me about him, Narakat. Did you find him there? Yes. Did he say anything to you? 
His mind was wandering. Perhaps you'd be so good as to fetch the general, Mr. Narakot. We'll delay dinner for you both. No need for that. He's dead. Down there, on the beach, leaning against a rock like a stick of driftwood. Chapter 4. Seven little sailor boys chopping up sticks. One chopped himself in halves, and then there were six. Rogers is a first-class butler. I'll say that for him. Wife was a pretty good cook, too. Too bad we only got one meal out of her. Ladies and gentlemen, back to the business at hand. I'm going to ask Mr. Narakot to continue his investigation. But he's the last one who saw the General alive. The last one who is willing to admit to it. Mr. Narakot. We're back in control. Great. I'm actually quite surprised that cutscene came out and it recorded fine and there were no problems this time. So I don't have to spend ages faffing around afterwards re-editing and re-recording the cutscenes. That's one good thing I suppose. Cause of death, Doctor? The back of his skull was crushed with a blunt instrument. Could the General's death have been an accident? There were multiple wounds. Unless you repeatedly slam the back of his head against a rock, I think we can safely rule out accident and suicide. Which confirms what we've all come to suspect. The first two deaths were undoubtedly murder as well. I concur. I don't know, that general's kind of nutty. I could actually see him slamming his back of his head on a rock a few times. Time of death? Only a few minutes before he was found. Not more than 30 at the outside. Do you have an alibi for that period of time? Why, the judge and I were playing snooker. Forgive me, Doctor, but you went up to your room, if you'll recall. Oh, of course, of course. For a moment or two only. If you'll excuse me, Doctor. Oh, so the Doctor disappeared? Very suspicious. Where were you during the half hour in question? I won't deny that Lombard and I had split up by then. I was just wondering, collecting my thoughts, you might say. How did you come to find the body? I'd seen the old gent down on the beach when we searched the island. He seemed pretty confused. I saw the storm coming on, knew it was almost supper time. Thought I'd collect him. See anyone else on the beach? No, no one. See anything of a murder weapon? Plenty of solid Devon rocks about. I didn't see any blood but the rock could have just been tossed in the surf. One said he'd stay right there, and then there were seven. Thank you, Miss Claythorne, for again calling our attention to the rhyme. It is significant without a doubt. We have one dead from having choked himself. Another overslept herself. Now a third wishes to remain in Devon, and his wish is granted to him in a most final manner. Good evening, Mr. Bloor. And from the summer of the, the, the chapter that we heard, what's the chapter six this is on? What, somebody's gonna get cut in half. It's getting more gruesome by the minute. Where were you during the half hour in question? Up on Ship Rock, where we spoke. The entire time? Yes, until the wind came up. I thought I should get back before the storm. You could see the beach from where you were? I spent most of my time on the far side of the summit. But I did move to a position above the beach once or twice. I saw you talking to the general from there. Yes. He seemed to know he was going to die. Could that be because you were swinging a rock at his head? He was quite alive when I left him. Did you see anyone else on the beach? Yes, I saw Philip. <coughs> Mr. Lombard and Mr. Bloor walking up the path from the beach. But that was earlier. Anything else you can add, Vera? No. Nothing, I'm afraid. A good evening to you, Miss Claythorne. Stay safe. Right, two sweet question next, then. Let's go around to the other side of the table. Where were you during the half hour in question? After the doctor and I finished our game, I had a look around the library. 
I'm surprised to say I found one of my own books in there. I wonder which of the previous inhabitants of the island it belonged to. Why not Owen? My dear Mr. Bloor, it was perfectly clear to me some time ago, and after your search you must realize now as well, Mr. Owen is on this island. He, or she, is one of us. No, no, no. Young lady, this is no time for refusing to look facts in the face. We are all in grave danger. One of us is Mr. Unknown, and Mr. Unknown has no good planned for us. I'm a well-known professional man. The mere idea that I could be suspected of murder is preposterous. I, too, am a well-known person. That, my dear sir, proves less than nothing. Doctors have gone mad before now. Judges have gone mad. So have policemen. What do you think we should do, Judge? Be on our guard, especially at night. I'd suggest prayer. I'm not adverse to prayer, Miss Brent, but I would supplement it with a locked door. Anything else you'd like to add? Yes. I've been asked why I trust you, Mr. Narricot, our odd man out, to lead these informal inquiries of ours. It is very simple. It is clear to me that Mr. Owen had not planned on you stopping here on the island with us. Unless Bloor is Owen. Stow that talk, Doctor. An attempt has been made on your life. So he says. Right now, there is no one I trust more to get us out of this predicament. Brittily spoken, Judge. I know you'll pardon me for saying this, but if you are Owen, you might want a bumbling amateur on the case more than a professional like Bloor. I would hope we all answer Mr. Bloor's questions with equal candor. Too right. I've got a plan to get off the island. Can you help me build a parachute? I'm not as strong as I once was, I'm afraid. Perhaps some of the others can assist you. Are you sure you can't tell me what you were hinting at about Marsden's politics? Marsden's family was furious with him for becoming involved with a London group enamored of Mr. Hitler's expansionist policies. It's always sad when the younger son of a great family goes astray. Good evening, Judge. Yeah, that, that was a snippet of uh, information we found out for giving him the tobacco pipe. But we already knew what he told us by that point anyway. But uh, he was, what, well, Marston was a Nazi spy. So, yep, another pointless puzzle in the game. <laughs>